Well, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and it's so nice to have you join me today for the Friday Masterclass, where today we're continuing with sound design and composition and looking at a project where just sort of identifying different ways to make those visual moments happen with sound and uh, really focus slightly more on the compositional aspect today. A couple weeks ago, we talked about, you know, specific sound design creating sort of all the various sound effects for it. it was a boxing scene and the and the multi-layering and stacking of different effects just to create a single punch or a single whatever it is. Today we're going to look at sort of the the aesthetic around using music to again sort of continue to provide that extra little something that audio does when um, juxtaposed against video. So as always we're coming to you across multiple networks so thank you so much for joining in. Great to see you all today on this Friday. Also worth pointing out, I've decided as of two days ago, you know, I don't drink a lot of coffee anymore. I just decided that I'm not going to drink it at all anymore, as little as I was doing. So I will not have my my beetle mug with me as I often do. And I must admit, <laughs> I feel fine. I don't have any headaches, but I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling. That's all. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start today. We're just going to dive right in. And let's bounce over to the audition. How are you, Shlomi? Schwanz Boxa, thank you so much. You're very kind. You're very welcome. What's up, Reverb Mike, Cody, Rick, Theo, Theo, Pulp Music, Eugene. All right. So I um, initially I had planned today to live compose, which we've done many times on the stream here. Um, sadly. That wasn't, I guess that just wasn't going to happen today. Having some little technical things. So, oh, and that reminds me, before I even move further, I got to turn off, uh, because we are going to be working in stereo. Ooh, like it's, ooh, like it's 1967 or 66. Um, so hold on, let me just, I got to get rid of this noise reduction on here. Because again, we're going to kind of focus in on the music. So I, I had to dip back to, and hopefully this doesn't throw my sync out. Or you tell me. I'll be looking at the chat here. Am I still in sync? You probably hear a little bit of background noise from the fan on my streaming computer here kicking in as it does its thing. Well, I got about a 24% CPU load. Shouldn't be, but okay. Tell me if I'm still in sync. Hopefully, hopefully I am. All right. So, and if I'm not, well, too bad. Uh, big glass of OJ. Yeah, blah, no. Just water. You know, I only drink water. I drink water and coffee and throat coat tea. Those are literally the three things I drink. Uh, and I only drink water during the day outside of used to drinking my one or two cups of what I like to refer to as the New York Deli style coffee. <laughs> I used to drink three or four quad shot lattes a day. That was about five and a half, six years ago. And then I completely stopped that. Um, but yeah, lemonade. There you go, Reverb Mike. I can dig that. Pink lemonade. Okay. So this is a project that, uh, as I was trying to find, because I had to find something where I'd already composed stuff um, from over 10 years ago. So this is the thing that, well, I composed this. This was not the music that was used in the actual commercial, but this was a commercial that was done in the Premiere workflow. Uh, it was a Hot Wheels thing. And uh, for the demo, I wound up sort of re-recording all new music. And I think I used some of their sound design and augmented it with some of my own. So there's a couple of different elements here. I first I would thought I thought I would just kind of play for you what this uh, what this piece looked like just with the voice. You can kind of see, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of space to work with, and we have to create, you know, this whole scene. So kind of like we saw, and it's only it's a minute. So as with the previous uh, scene with the two guys at the kitchen table, when you just hear the talk track, it's you know, th this is what you're given as a sound designer, right? And, you, and you, you're, it's really a blank slate. So let's take a quick listen to this. I think I have, uh, wow, I have a hard limiter on here. I mean, wow, how old is this? I would never put a hard limiter, the like the hard limiter effect on the master. I'm just going to quickly place my, uh, my go-to favorite ultra maximizer just to pump up the amplitude for you all on... Uh, on the stream here, so give me one second. This is not going to adversely change the sound. I'm just going to make it a little bit louder during playback. All right, yeah, I'll use wideband arc. That's fine. Okay, so uh, let's take a listen here. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. 
I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. It's a lot of dead space here. So again, this is all, you know, all of this is where we'd be doing a lot of sound design. I should have made that full screen, right? This whole thing here. Okay, so I'm going to, let me do this, just so you're not totally bored. I'm going to put the sound effects mix back in here. There's already some, you can see I've got some automation kind of flying. There's also some manual automation. We're going to do a little bit with the panning too. But for this section here, just because it's so long, this is where the sound design and the music kind of have to keep the viewer engaged, right? Because it's it's about a 40-ish a, a 40, 40 second stretch, right, where there's no talking. So I'm going to put the sound design back in. No music yet. Let's take a look at that again. Joy. Wait a second. Play that back. He was supposed to jump that plane. Sir, I think someone switched the paperwork last night. I wonder who that might have been. <laughs> That's super fun. I, I, I really like that. So again, lot, a lot to work with here. Uh, one of the nice things I like in this section here, and again, I don't, have the, um, I don't have the master anymore, but you can hear where obviously this was, you know, this section here where it's kind of the slow-mo jump. It's the same sound of the motorcycle, stretch slowed down. And from the sound of it, it sounds like a like a resample stretch, um, as opposed to a you know preserve pitch but continue duration but allow it to get longer stretch. So it has that kind of slower, it's slightly lower in pitch quality by design of using the resample method. Um, but it kind of just helps to sell that that idea, that visual idea, a little bit better. And then you see, and I love that when he says, wait, he was supposed to jump that plane. It's kind of hard to see. This was, this is 720. It's interesting. Again, I, I don't have any of the master video. I mean, I might somewhere on a drive. I just archived. And by archived, I mean took stuff off and then deleted, bulk deleted, uh, 10 old hard drives. Combination of USB 2, USB 3, and like I, no, there were no Firewire. What were some of the... Yeah, some of them I just were, were just older USB drives. But anyway, um, 720p footage. So it's, it's just, unfortunately, you know, it's not, it's not so clear. But that, when he says, this is the plane he was supposed to jump down here, this little tiny <laughs> little Cessna, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. I don't know if that came through in the video. It's a little... It's, it's also, they, I remember when they did this in Premiere, I'm trying to remember if it was After Effects. There was a whole thing about applying the like film grain... You know, it was already an overcast day, but using film grain to kind of give it a slightly more filmic, uh, classic look and stuff. Reverb, Mike, you're on a roll today. Very nice. Oh, Hawaiian Punch? No, never a Hawaiian Punch fan. We need more whooshes. Yeah, exactly. All right. So one of the first things that, you know, I'll typically do uh, if I'm composing something against video is I will, and particularly because... <laughs> still doing it in audition despite it not having virtual instrument support which means i have to play everything live which is what you can see here these are all live takes there was a little uh, a punch well not so much a punch in there's it's stopping so i just i think i just did a different take yeah you can even see so this is all one live bass take and then i just i may have missed the timing the first time around so i did another take of the of the bass at the end but it's a continuous single take um 
I'll use a metronome. And the reason for that, of course, is, you know, as you're going through, you're likely going to drop markers, but then you can also try and figure out tempo wise, once you've dropped in those markers, what the pace of this has to be. It's not, it's not really an exact science, but you know, so as we're going through again here, so I'll, I'll, I got the metronome off, you know. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. Drop in a marker. We might want to start building up some of the instrumentation here. So, you know, I might type, come over here. We'll do instrument build up intro. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. All right, again, here now is, you know, something you might enjoy. You kind of want to kick it in a little bit harder because now we're getting into this whole section. You know, where he's like showing off. And then, you know, right around here, slow mo begins, right? So, slow mo begins. And, you know, typically I'll kind of drop those in ahead of time. I tried to find that sequence, couldn't do it. It's 12 years old. Uh, you know, crescendo, more. This one is interesting solo bits. And then slow mo begins. And again, you're kind of, you know, you're spot viewing this. You can either play it uh, or just wait. Now, again, we have the, wait a second. So the audio has to end here. So again, this is where it gets a little tricky and where playing with tempo matters because you can always, you know, just abruptly cut out the audio, but we kind of have to, you know, we don't have to end exactly where she stops talking, but there has to be some kind of a shortly thereafter, right? So you can see right here, it's sort of like crash symbol, or in this case, a final bass note. I think I've got my drums comped. I can't remember, I think I was playing an electric drum kit on this. So again, right around here, after she talks, you know, let's make this marker, you know, we've got stop, right? Wind that back, and there's that little sound effect that played in between here, the little um, record scratch. We have this soloed. Always a crowd pleaser, right? And then it comes back to her her, yeah. her her dialogue. Play that back. And then I had to kind of make that decision where where does the music come back in? And it's right there. So right as he kind of, you know, they, they rewind the tape, so to speak. And right before it starts to play back again, I start kicking the music back in again, right? Music resumes. Spelled incorrectly. All right. Moving forward again. He was supposed to jump that. Sir, I think someone switched the paperwork last night. I wonder who that might have been. Down there. Right, and this part's significant here, and you can even see it in the way that I'm playing the bass line, is that we're starting to, this whole thing is kind of a crescendo. So all of this, when the music resumes, it's a buildup, right? Slow buildup. And then when we get to around here, I wonder who that could have been. Right after that, we really need to be like, Gah -gah, it's gotta be something. The, the, the motorcycle's back on screen, it's just gotta be louder. Now again, some of this we can do with mixing. You can play around with how, you know, the, the, the timing may not exactly match, but that's where again, you know, if you've got, in this case, electric guitars, you push them to the front, you know, everything kind of gets a little bit louder right there. You ramp up the amplitude, even if maybe dynamically or rhythmically, you're not quite on the downbeat just yet, that's okay. You're gonna kind of simulate that, uh, that same thing. But having that marker there, it's gonna tell you, this is where we gotta kick it in. So as you're playing against tempo, against time, you know, you can see, am I pretty close? You'll, and you'll get the idea, all right? So in fact, let's, let's move this a little. Yeah, it would be about right here, okay? So, big crescendo. There we go. All right, and then end. Da -da -da. So we got to be out by here. And out. All right. 
And you can see I kind of kind of nailed that right there, the last little fade out of the symbol. The symbol actually happens just before, but it's nice because the graphic kind of has this little sort of like flash thing, right? They're just adjusting scale, so it kind of works. There's some nice little sound design in there too, okay? All right, so now typically what I'll do is again, now we're gonna implement some metronome timing. You can see here, uh, you know, we have, I don't talk too much about the metronome in Audition. I actually like this and designed all the sounds for it back in the cool edit days. Um, we're at 133 beats per minute. This is what you would see if you uh, got the sheet music of this, they'd probably refer to this as moderate rocker. <laughs> I think up to about 144 BPM is still considered moderate rock. All right, cowbell. This this could definitely use some cowbell, Mike. Unfortunately, like again, I, I would add cowbell, but I'm I'm unable to do that today. So I actually started, um, and this is something typical of me. I've talked about this on stream before. A lot of people always sort of start with drums. I often start with piano, and especially when I'm playing live, someone's like, oh, but wouldn't you do drums first to make sure it's in time? Well, in this case too, because I'm playing to a metronome, I could I could start with anything, right? The idea is to stay in time, on time. So uh, I started in this case, this was, this was how it was exactly recorded, laid out exactly in this order with bass. So uh, let's, let's check this out and kind of hear how I'm sort of moving through this. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. Okay, so right there, you can see, all right, I'm just gonna take the sound effects off for a minute. All right, and again, remember now in this, in this marker right here, I'm saying crescendo more, or in that case, there's gotta be some, just some kind of, I should have, I should have labeled that, you know, key change, something. This whole time I'm kind of vamping. By the way, anybody who's uh, old school music, what, what does that bass line vamp remind you of? I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. Okay. Nobody. <laughs> Nazareth. Give you one hint. Nazareth. Mid 70s. Enjoy. Alajid. I'm so fascinated by your tutorials that I had to download and watch all the Audition 101 episodes. Ah, oh, you're very kind. Much love from Nigeria. Much love from the desert, my friend. Thank you. Maya Balach, hello, sir. Hello, nice to see you. Everything Paranormal Show. Ah, oh, very kind of you. Thank you so much for watching. This flight tonight. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so again, right here. Interesting solo bits and slow-mo begins. And I'm playing, I'm, I'm playing, uh, you know, triplets against this. Simple octaves, building up, right? Because we got to kind of build up till the stop. Wait a second. Right? So again, you could just kind of hear how in the bass line alone, we're, we're sort of driving how this is all going to go. Now kind of taking things a little bit out of order here, you know, and I, the guitar parts, these aren't mixed by the way. So EQ wise, these, these may be a little, uh, a little in your face. Let's see this. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. Oh, this is so cheap. Such a terrible, terrible solo. But, you know, when you have the... Um, Spider, I trust you got some sleep last night. All the guitars in there. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy.
So we're just kind of creating this dissonance and noise, right? And all the while, you're just kind of building and building and building and building and trying to build some tension there. It, you know, this is pretty sloppy. Um, I think one of the ways that I masked that was, all right, I, you know, I always, I always have like organ and clavinet in here. So this was, this was kind of hidden in the background of the mix there. Red rock. <laughs> Some organ stabs. So now the organ in particular, talked about this a lot, um, you know, and you can hear I'm doing all this. That's, that's my odes, ode to Billy Preston, uh, who taught me that when I was like 11. Um, just doing all those, all those swells and just a lot, of, a lot of noise. You can really use organ, in particular, I imagine in this slow mo bit here, to just again kind of. I'm prob. I think I remember. I'm sort of climbing um, in 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 half steps. Uh, just to, and then, you know, using the uh, Leslie simulation to just make it, you know, just really kind of this intense vibration. Uh, so here, let's take a quick listen to that, isolated. <laughs> that with the wah clav. All right, and then throw the bass back in there. All right, and there's some echo on the, on the clav there, so that, uh, that should have been, I'm gonna fix that right now. That's got to stop. All right, like that. Okay, so all of this together, of course, you know, and then I'm forgetting the drums. So that's the other key component here. Uh, and the drums just had to be, you know, heavy and rocking. So again, kind of in the spirit of where the bass started. And again, based on those markers, we're trying to build up a little bit here. So you can see I'm just playing like kick and uh, hi-hat to start. Uh, solo, 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 and solo. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. Play that back. I want to also point out for those watching that drum take is one take. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at many things musically. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, it just it just kind of builds this whole thing, right? We're just we're just constantly building and using the markers to get us there. So once we have it sort of all together, and it's interesting, again, I I haven't looked at this project in so long. I mean, I have like the faders just pushed to the hilt, but I, I, this is obviously my, this was like my all faders version because you can see everything's kind of going into clipping here. There's no effects on any of this. It's not even EQ'd. So it does need a little finessing as we're going. I like the little Superman over there. Yeah. <laughs> Eugene, hair of the dog, you're getting, you're, yeah, you're, you're in the ballpark there. Yes, indeed. 
insert Vin Diesel triple jump effect. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, doesn't this look exactly? And you could also say 25 or 64 to some degree. It's very similar. I was actually thinking there's a there's a version, my specific. So yes, there's, there, I, I can't remember if actually the, th the song I'm thinking of was, on, I don't think it was on Hair of the Dog, although uh, the similar bass sound is. Um, they did a version of Morning Dew, talking about Nazareth, on not the old Grey Whistle Test. It was it was either Beat Club or Music Laden. I don't remember if it had swapped over at that point. But it starts. Walk me out in the morning, dude. Anyway, it's super trippy, and um, check it out on YouTube. You know, it's uh, it's definitely Beat Club. I can't remember if it was Beat Club or Music Laden. I think it's Beat Club Nazareth. I'm forgetting the year because ugh, this used to be my thing. I, 72, 73, could be 71, I don't know. I fail today. Um, you know, it has the old school chroma key, the blue screen behind them, really hard edges. But the bass line, oh my God, I remember seeing that. I think I first saw that on, um, anybody remember MTV's Closet Classics? Does anybody remember that, MTV Closet Classics? No? Maybe. I don't know. That's where I first saw it, I believe. And that was like in the, in the mid to late 80s. So, okay. Anyway, let's uh, bring everything back in. I think those guitars need a little bit of... Uh, let's just solo those for a second because they're kind of a sonic mess. It, I may just, it may just be a matter of uh, just a little bit of panning. Okay, some of those, the fills are panned. It's just, it's just a lot of very, very busy, low, mid-range heavy. All right, so... Again, nothing, nothing beats, you know, panned guitars playing the same part, but again, just slightly differently, pan hard left and right. So what I, what I might do with something like this is I might create like a bus. All right, and we'll call this uh, guitar fill end. All right, and we'll take the two guitar fills, we'll send both of them there. I want to send them, we'll send them post fader, that's fine. Uh, yeah, we can do the same here. Let's do hard left and right. Adjust the level here. And then what we can then do, actually, hold on a second. Just kind of add a, a global uh, a global EQ to that, which um, I think will just make it a little bit uh, make it a little a little a little better, taking up a little less of the same little less of the same space there. All right, so I actually just did a rather than do a, a, a an effect send. I'm actually sending the tracks directly. So I'm doing the difference. Audition handles it the same way. This is really what you would use more for grouping or subgrouping using the output. It's still a bus, but implemented here versus in the send section, which typically, again, you're going to use for effects. So if I were creating an effects bus, I would send them from here with the appropriate uh, uh, pan and volume levels. But I actually just want both of the guitars to go to a channel. So I can just control them together like this, right? on a single fader. And then in that case, I can also apply uh, a nice little EQ to those as well. So um, lots of options here. One that I like, again, I you know, whenever I can highlight things with decent presets, let's see, see if there's any good ones in here. 
So this is uh, the Manny Marikin guitar power chords. Those are kind of power chordy. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Just added a little bit of a lift. It's not, it's funny, as much as you can see it appears to be doing, it's almost like it's canceling itself out. Um, that's okay. Let's see, let's see what else we got. Rhythm guitar, let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, so that's got a cut of uh, around 2 dB at 110. So that again, 110 hertz, the octave 220, that's where you're gonna get a lot of that sort of, uh, uh, muddiness, which you don't want to strip away from rhythm guitars. There's a great scene in Peter Jackson's um, Get Back where uh, they're doing a take of I've Got a Feeling, and John Lennon is starting with this sort of guitar arpeggio. So, and he's just playing this uh, this pattern over and over again, sort of ostinato. And at one point they say, hey, can you turn the bass down on the guitar, like the, the bass, the uh, you know, treble bass. So you turn sort of the bass down on the guitar and he, he, it loses something. He's like, ah, oh, you know, but I was kind of getting a drone going because what happens is a lot of those frequencies in that range as they're sort of the harmonics are hitting each other, it, it just creates something that's a little thicker, a little warmer and just lends itself to the sound of the performance especially, but if you take it away, it just sounds thin and it just, it changes the whole character of the guitar entirely. So sometimes you want it, in this case, because we have all those of the guitars and this is, we actually want this more for presence, not so much as the chonk, because a lot of that chonk the is gonna come out of that bass line. So we may, this is what, let, let's see, it's yeah, minus 1.7, yeah, that's that's okay. Maybe we even back it off a little less, so, it, or. Yes, back it off, so maybe minus a dB, 1.3 dB, you know, four tenths of a dB less. But I think that actually sounds pretty good. If we bring the other guitars in there as well, um, you know, again, just like with, you know, with painting, just like with design, audio is, you're making space for everything and you're using equalization to carve out those spaces, right? So in this case, let's go back to those other guitars and hear what that sounds like now. <laughs> That's a pleasant sound, right? Let's put the drums and the bass in there. So again, just gives it a little bit more space. We can, you know, listen with it off. It actually, it's actually a little muddier, right? Maybe we even give it a little bit of lift. The problem is that we start to put a little too much like 15K in there, even 10K. Those symbols are kind of bright. So you're gonna now, you're gonna start to kind of fight there and you're gonna get sort of ear fatigue and you're gonna lose, like there's really nothing else that's resonating in that range right now. It's pretty much just the cymbals. It's certainly not the, the clavinet. It's certainly not the bass. It's definitely not the organ. So again, you can use a little bit, but eh, you know, you don't wanna add too much of that super top end. Unless again, you know, like 80s, there's a lot of that. You know, there's also a ton of top end on, on drums in general. So. That's why when you listen back to those mixes that have not been remixed or remastered properly, just like the whole high, you just get ear fatigue because the guitars are just so, they're so bright. Whereas in the 70s, they were sort of darker, warmer, you know, listen to, you know, anything from Black Sabbath to, to Deep Purple to Rainbow, Uriah Heep, you know, uh, all of these were just sometimes bright, but never, you wouldn't say, oh, that's a super bright guitar. As the 70s rolled on, definitely a little bit later, and in particular with Uriah Heep, they got some criticism that the guitars are kind of being <laughs> thinned out in the background. But in general, you've just got warmer, bigger, thicker. I think there's a classic one from Ozzy Osbourne who like, 
in the studio mixing. I can't remember which Black Sabbath album it was, but he just had the engineer like roll all the treble off. So there's no treble at all. It's just like, <clears throat> you know, because you just feel it more and you don't get that sort of cringy ear fatigue. Okay. What's up, pulp music? Okay. June, yes, the flight tonight. That's that's what Ron Ronan had suggested before. I mean, again, very, very close. Okay. Everything paranormal. I remember all of my MTV. Yes, nice. So you remember Closet Classics? I think it would air like Fridays or Saturdays at 11 p.m. This would be, I'd be able to stay up on the weekend. It, it wasn't during the week. It was definitely on the weekends. And it was late at night, I think. I think. That's a long time ago. Because then it would go into the... What was that, like, rock thing that was late, late at night? Ricky Rackman eventually took it over, but there was somebody who did it before him. I can't remember. It's like metal something or other. But Closet Classics were so great. It's the first time I, I remember seeing the video for... Uh, one of the first videos I ever saw was Blue Cheer, Summertime Blues, on that. Okay. All right, we got about 20 minutes. So... We're going to just kind of do a quick rough mix of this because then the other part of this is getting it back to Premiere, right? Presumably this, the process of doing the sound design as we showed before. We sent something from Premiere to here with the dialogue, the sound, you know, and the reference video. And now we're going to send the audio back to Premiere to kind of do our additional color correction, fixing, editing. Maybe we cut out some of that slow-mo, you know, et cetera. We can do those things. So we're just going to do a quick rough mix here and then go into the export options I'll show you and show you how that all sort of rolls back into Premiere Pro, okay? So let's turn everything uh, back on here. And uh, I'm going to pull this, cl I don't know about this clav. I don't want to deal, we don't have enough time to deal with a ton of effects. So we're just going to kind of do levels. <laughs> kind of do a levels mix here. So yeah, let's let's start with that. So let's I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill the guitars for a minute. And let's let's begin with the organ here. Let's just see. I like the sort of drum bass mix. I know it's it's over modulated slightly. That's okay. I'm not gonna worry about that in the mix. That is what our friend the uh, Ultra Maximizer is handling. <laughs> this is not a good technique. Don't do that. Don't put your faders in the red here. But for this, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow it because it's actually. It actually sounds pretty good. We're also getting away with that because the tracks themselves, the drums look pretty hot. But, um, and these were, again, I think this was on Electric Kit or just pre-mixed down, I can't remember. But, uh, you know, recorded nicely. And you can see I didn't even fix in the bass track here. There's, you know, yeah, there's like a little clipped, little clip section here. All right, so while I'm here, uh, we don't want to leave that in there. So this little piece right here is clipping. This is a great opportunity to go into the diagnostics panel go into the D clipper, okay? And we can say restore lightly clipped, scan, it finds it, repair, and it repairs that clip, all right? The other thing you could do, because you can see it's sort of uh, affected overall amplitude here. If you come in, now you'll see as I zoom in, we are now at sample level, okay? This is right at zero, okay? It is, it is flat lined. What you can actually do, because we are in, and this is 24 bit. God, I wonder what I recorded this with. Show, I mean, I guess I never altered it, so it's still a native 24 bit. That makes sense. Okay, that would be any. I'm, I'm, normally, I, again, I've like fixed, I've done some processing to the files, even fixing little clip things. I must have done this really fast. So this is like right through whatever sound. I think I was using uh, Motu. Um, sound devices back then. So yeah, straight 24 bit. Because it is 24 bit, even though we're at zero, technically digitally clipped, if I make a selection on that clipped piece right here, and I adjust the amplitude ever so slightly. Now again, if it's real bad, you need to use the declipper. If it if it isn't in this case, like we weren't hearing distortion or clipping or popping, I can actually use the amplitude control and then look what happened. It it actually restored and maintained a piece of the transient. Remember, this was flat. It was flat at zero. So without affecting any of the other amplitude elsewhere before, let's redo the amplify, after, okay? And that, that may be the case many times. Look, it looks like I've got one here too. All right, this one right here. 
let's see. Let's just drop this about, we'll take it down about a dB and a half. Okay. All right. And you can get away with this. You can see it's, it's, it's basically still flat, but um, this is a very short transient. Now, base, in the case of base uh, frequencies, you might incur a little bit of clipping. But if I take a listen, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, but again, I'm, I'm thumping the pick so hard, doesn't bother me. If you want to eliminate any of those kind of clipped things, here's the other thing we could do. I'm going to undo both of those. Instead of restore lightly clipped, I can do restore normal. Okay. Scan. It doesn't affect any amplitude, but then I can take the amplitude control, <clears throat> excuse me, and then just adjust everything so we're kind of not right at zero again. Still making the difference between restore normal and restore lightly clipped is restore lightly clipped is going to do that amplitude adjustment for you just to bring everything uh, uh, within range so that it's not really at negative 0.1 decibels again. All right. So you, you, have, you have different ways of doing this. Typically, for something like a super short transient like this, like I said, I'll come in, make that change like that. It actually restored the transient there. Okay, similarly, come over here and do the same thing to this one right here. All right, like that. You want to zoom in tight, by the way. Don't, don't zoom in, don't do a wide zoom area because then you'll be affecting amplitude of multiple things, okay? And then we can go ahead and just save this back. And I'll actually destructively save this. I'm just repairing uh, some digital clicks right there, okay? I'm being mindful of time. We've got, uh, we've got 12 minutes. All right, so let's do guitar, sorry, bass, drums, and organ. Here we go. And I've got the organ at minus five. Let's, let's just pull it back a little bit. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. Okay, so like in a section right there, that might be an opportunity where I want to do some kind of automation. Right? So if I wanted to do some automation on this, I can come over to my organ stabs, put it into write mode. And now when I start playback and I grab my fader, it's going to record the movements. Okay. And if we go over to here, just to kind of cut ahead a little bit, if I twirl down the automation lane, now you see I'm in touch mode. So what touch mode is, if I go back and I make alterations, I touch the fader, I make a change. When I let go, it goes back to wherever it was, okay? And you can see in the automation lanes here, this is all the movement of the fader, right? I'm fading up, fading down, fading up slightly, fading back down, okay, fading up, fading down. Da, da. This works the same way in Premiere. Okay, if you're if you're into it visually, if we play back, if you watch, this is what we would in the old days call flying faders. Right. See it moving by itself. Back down again. Heavy Metal Mania with D. Snyder. <laughs> yes, God, D. Snyder. Right, he was a huge part of that. Right, of course, of course. Okay. So anyway, that kind of gives you the idea. We're not going to do automation for everything. We don't have time. Maybe just a little bit at the end here. Oh, whoops, that was spotlight. Okay. And you see when I let go, it kind of slowly went back. And I just kind of gave it a little bit of a... So, got some automation going on there. Great. Okay. 
twirl this up now. Uh, let's go next. I don't know about the clav. I'm not so sure. By the way, and I, I, I found this one too. Um, I did have an alternate. I think I must have shown this at one point at max where I implemented a, a bass that was using a wah pedal instead. So again, this is another complete take of it. No edits here at all. Um, <laughs> I like that. So again, maybe that's an element that I pull into the other mix. Um, a little too, you know, it's very 70s, you know, which is right up my alley. Um, but kind of just, again, alternate, alternate takes of the same thing here. Uh, let's see, let's bring in the guitars now. I'll just hear kind of what these sound like from the start. Red Rider, I trust you got some sleep last night. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. So again, these, they're super warm, you know, they, they need some equalization. We don't have time to do all of that now. One way that we can kind of maybe, you know, give a little more space since they're both pan center is just to offset them. And you can see I've got them pretty low in the mix uh, already. And this is sort of where I left them, I guess. Um, just because, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it needs some EQ work and we don't have time to go through all of that. But we just want something that's kind of passable. So let's see. Okay, so this. We definitely want some automation on this, right? We definitely, definitely want automation on that. So we're gonna go into right. Let's take our time right back to here. And I think, you know, this is, again, I would add some kind of cool delay or something to just break, make this a little bit bigger, but let's add a little bit of automation on this. You know, uh, this could be, let's see, if I were to add real quickly, I'm just going to do it. So we're going to automate, you can also automate effects, okay? So um, uh, reverb, delay, delay is going to make it just hard to deal with. Uh, okay, let, let, let's just do a reverb. Let's get something really bright, really, really super bright. Now, again, I, would, I wouldn't normally apply this here, but I'm just going to turn it on. I'm going to use automation to turn it on where we need it, all right? So let's just kind of design a quick, very bright, not super long decay, kind of a big room. Early reflection is fine. It can be sort of wide. Let's keep it brighter. Roll off a lot of the low mids. I don't want too much damping, and I do want some diffusion. Let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> Shoot, I'm in touch mode. Of course, I'm, I'm automating all of these parameters as we speak. So because I'm already in touch mode, you saw when I adjusted the wet balance there, it's already, um, it's already automating <laughs> the studio reverb. So I have to go back to the wet output level here. That's these pink keyframes. And uh, I, need to, I need to get rid of those. So, or just redraw them, I guess. Yeah, that would probably be easier. I don't think, yeah, it doesn't allow me to multi-select. What a drag. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna back up. All right, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it on here. So it's going to be, I have to do this first. Off. OK. 
Okay. And then move up here. On. Okay. You can see now you see this like crescendo of adjusting there and then dropping it back down, okay? So kind of cool, like that. I can show the envelope really quickly for uh, the rack power, which it looks like it didn't take my, this is on, so we want this to be off before this section right here, okay? So if we shuttle over here now, you can see it is off. And when we get to this section, it should turn on. There we go. Woohoo! Okay, all right. So, all right, we got three minutes. Let's bring everything in. We're just gonna do a quick, quick levels pass here and just make sure the voice stays nice and intelligible. There's a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. Play that back. He was supposed to jump that plane. Sir, I think someone switched the paperwork last night. I wonder who that might have been. Okay, we really need more of a ride of the faders, the drums, and the bass, and everything at the end there. We won't worry about that for now. Pretty good. Okay. So from here, now that we have this, okay, and in fact, you know, I'm going to do one more thing. I don't want a wideband arc. I'm actually going to do loud and proud because that's going to not pump quite as much. He was supposed to jump that plane. Sir, I think someone switched the paperwork last night. I wonder who that might have been. Makes it a little bit brighter too. Again, the wideband arc is simulating sort of a more analog style. Um, right now that we have this, first I'm just going to save. Save this as resaved one. So I have my starter session again. And we're going to go up to the multi track. Now, first of all, I just want to make sure we're still, yeah, Premiere is here. Okay, so here's the same thing video, no audio. Okay, let's go back to audition, multi track, export to Premiere Pro. Okay, we got two minutes. All right. As mentioned, you have lots of different options here when doing this. Now, of course, uh, I'm not seeing exactly. We'll put it right in here. Sure, fine. Okay, we have options. So we can do each track as a stem, each bus as a stem, or we can mix it down mono, stereo, or 5-1. All right. If we do stems, we can remix and rebalance each of those inside of Premiere and re-EQ them, which would be great because we haven't finished all of this yet. If we do a mono or stereo or 5.1 file, if this were 5.1, then we can always edit original back into Audition to make changes. So if I do export each track as stem, I'm gonna do that. It's going pretty quickly because this is super fast. We're back in Premiere. Let's copy to the active sequence to new audio tracks. Click OK. All right. And I see nothing. Oh, there they are. Took a second. I don't know why it started on track four, but okay. Let's wind back. Let's play. And Red Rider. 
trust you got some sleep last night. I'll take that as a yes. I think we have something you might enjoy. Okay, and just like that, friends, we are done and out of time. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we will see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.